All right. You're good right there. Recording? Okay. You're recording. All right. Well, welcome to the Municipal Budget Committee for our first budget review of the 2019 2020 uh, budget season. Uh, today's date is November 19th. The time says 7 p.m. Um, roll call. So we have Phil Bilodeau, Joanne Bradbury, John Dubianski. Zach Langlois, myself, Herman Pretorius, Bill Von Hassel, Brad Briggs, Bonnie Bobian. Is that right? Did I get it this time? I've been practicing for the last three weeks. Uh, Alden Dill and Andy Robertson. I see Andre. <laughs> <laughs> Andre W. Robertson. Uh, and then uh, absent today is Terry Roy uh, with an unexcused absence. Um, first, uh, first thing to do is call to order and pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Terry mentioned he wasn't going to be here. What's that? I feel like Terry said he wasn't going to be here last meeting. Terry, at the last meeting, said he's not going to be able to make a January okay. meeting. That's probably what I was thinking of. Um, so, um, okay. So, uh, first thing to review is the approval of minutes from the October 29th. Moved. Uh, Second. Okay. <laughs> Easy. So, that was moved by Zach Langlois and seconded by Alden Dill. Um, all those in favor of the draft minutes? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Uh, all those that are going to abstain? Okay, unanimous. Meeting minutes from 20, uh, October 29th have been approved. So let's get right into the discussion of the town and school budget. Um, I guess we're reviewing some part of the town budget today. Uh, I think everyone's plan, at least on the town side of things, was that we would stick with the presentation schedule okay. outlined. Uh, those folks here. Okay. There, there have been updates. Just on that note, there have been updates that John and I have been tracking uh, due to schedule conflicts. So um, we're, we're trying to accommodate that as best we can. And I think that uh, we're tracking that. It's probably an action item mind to send up a more updated schedule list to everybody. Um, school budget. Uh, in the works. Okay. <laughs> Any idea when we'd see a... Uh, we have a meeting tomorrow night. Um... We have a lot of work to do on it tomorrow. I am not sure if we're going to finish it tomorrow or not, so I suspect we'll need another meeting with it. So we're probably going to be early December, uh, but to give you an exact date would be premature at this point. Okay. Okay. I have one yeah, Andy. Um, we did set the tax rate last week, and just for uh, general public interest, uh, we set it at twenty-three dollars and eleven cents, which was four cents higher than the previous year. all be receiving paperwork in the mail shortly. Thank you, Andy. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the surplus <laughs> the school was rather good this year. So. And that was one of the things that indeed helped us uh, keep it pretty close to where it was, was uh, some of the money coming from the school. Excellent. Okay. Anything else from the school or town in general? I think the only other item we have is we are working on or negotiating with the para union right now. Okay. So when that contract is complete and approved on both sides, that will come before the NBC as well. Okay. That, um, that I would expect the, after the budget, probably, I don't know, later in December, beginning of January. Okay. So we have tentative meeting dates scheduled throughout December. A lot of those don't have agendas associated with them with the intent of reviewing the school budget. Mm -hmm. um, is, we should probably review those dates and see if we're going to get the school budget to review bef uh, earlier in advance. Yeah. Right. See if those, are, those dates are still applicable so from, from last year's. For the last couple of years, the school has held on to its budget until we had moved it past it and fully completed it. Uh, we used to provide a draft to the NBC okay. uh, a number of years ago. Uh, we stopped that practice uh, and went to a, uh, a different practice of not providing it until it was complete. Um, <clears throat> most certainly, there's draft copies of our budget available okay. on the website for any members of the community that want, want to see it. Okay. Uh, 
we can do that. Uh, the reasoning for doing that is uh, at one point, uh, a former chairman of this committee uh, told the school uh, that legally, once we presented a draft to this committee, we can no longer make changes to it. So it was no longer our working budget. So uh, due to that, we now hold it until it's complete. Seems counter to the definition of draft. But, I don't okay. disagree with you, but that's uh, the reasoning for it. <clears throat> okay. So, per, okay. On to anything else from school or town? I'm good. Okay. I have a we're not going to discuss it tonight, but I can certainly start this around. I have sure. updated insurance uh, budget pages. Okay. Which are those included? You didn't get those out already. These are we, um, we finally got our health insurance and uh, benefits and dental insurance um, rates, which is actually the two pages right after the cemetery, so it fits in the budget right quite nicely. Part of why I interrupted. <laughs> I guess onto the uh, town review budget items here. Um, John, there's an order on the agenda. It, we can stick with that order. Um, if you have a, a preferred order that you'd like to go in, it's up to you. The only thing I would suggest is since you do have uh, uh, commission members here, that you might want to take them first. Okay. Uh, I've got to be here for the entire meeting, so I don't mind being bumped up out of the way, and you can take the people that are already sitting here first. Okay. Um, uh, what's that? Do we, do we have volunteers? Employees, too. So <laughs> okay. I would move the cemetery budget um, to start as one okay. of Miss Mann's. Okay. Is that a motion? Yeah. I'll second. He said he'll well, cemeteries is first anyway. Beat me so, to it. Right. So, let's right. so, let's so why don't we start with cemeteries? Let's get cracking. Uh, if you're going to make a motion, are you going to throw the dollar amount in there? Uh, I was jumping away. I jumped away from that page, but 41401. I'd move the cemeteries budget for 41401. All right, so that's page. Hold on. Let's get everybody on the same page. 24. <laughs> page I 24. Page 24. I would defer to the cemetery commission uh, member. Uh, yeah. Ms. Mann, are you willing to discuss the cemetery budget, proposed budget? I think I probably ought to be. <laughs> <laughs> did you have specific questions, or did you just want me to run through the um, reasons for... If you wouldn't mind just kind of giving a brief overview, I, I see some increases in, in the budget there. There are um, some major increases in the budget. If, if you wouldn't mind just touching on some I of those, that would be great. Okay. Thank uh, you. We had a cemetery supervisor for the last 30 years, superintendent of the cemeteries, who also happened to own a construction company and also happens to be the town road agent. And we have paid him $1,600 a year for I don't know how many of those years. We were incredibly lucky. Uh, he has retired. We have not found one to take over this year. So some of the cemetery trustees have been doing the job in terms of selling plots, organizing plots, working with monument companies, et cetera. Uh, we've done some research, and the least expensive cemetery superintendent in any of the neighboring towns is Candia, and he has paid $5,000 a year. I don't know if we could get one for $5,000 a year, but as I say, that's the least expensive one we found in a surrounding town. And we've just been very, very lucky that Mark Young has done it for so long, for so little cost to the town. Uh, tree care. I'd actually like to skip to contractors first. When we put, if, the previous budget, as you can see, was essentially $21,000 a year. When we put out bids to have people come and give us estimates for maintaining the cemeteries that the town currently maintains, and there were eight of them, 
two people entered bids. You know, we did a walk around. We had several people come. And they asked what the current one was. And I said, you know, I can't tell you, but certainly you can look up the budget on the town website. The two bids that we got were higher than the total budget of $21,000 to maintain the cemeteries. And by maintain them, I mean spring cleanup, mowing, trimming, uh, fall cleanup. And so because the actual contractor's budget, as you can see, was $14,650, what we ended up doing is went back to the contract, the people who put in bids and said, all right, we're eliminating a couple of the cemeteries, so come back with another bid. And they did, and we have the contractors who were doing it. But the total budget is $14,650. It's costing us more than that. So we are taking that out of the tree but care budget. So we're not doing tree removal this year. And I don't know if you're aware of it, but there are several trees. If you're looking at the Morrison Cemetery, which is the one across from the, excuse me, the one across from the post office, there are a whole bunch of dead trees along the left-hand side that need to come down. There are also a whole bunch at Parade Cemetery that need to come down. But we just can't afford to do it this year because we've used the money for maintenance. Fortunately, we have some volunteers in the town who are taking care of some of the cemeteries. A couple of the trustees have taken upon themselves to go and do the mowing and the trimming in the cemeteries that we took out of the budget this year. So that goes back to why we want to increase the tree care budget because we need to take care of those trees and we've done nothing this year. The maintenance budget, if it really is $21,000 to $22,000 to maintain the cemeteries we're currently maintaining, and I would like to say that's not really all the town-owned cemeteries. There are town-owned cemeteries we're just not maintaining because we just don't have the money to do it. We're doing the big ones. Uh, supplies, that's staying the same. Uh, meetings is staying the same. There is for, uh, there were because uh, Terry Knowles, who was the person who worked for uh, the Attorney General's office, normally did the training for new trustees, and she's retired. There was no training this year, but we are hoping that we have three trustees that were elected in the last two years that have never had any training in terms of the legal requirements of trustees. We're hoping we will have that this year, so we'd like to keep that $300. And the grant budget, just in case we write a grant, we'd like to keep that dollar. So, so Ms. Mann, I, I have a, on, on, just on the contractors for 2019 actual, it, it says that you've only expensed about 5K. Is that because there's a delay in when the town gets billed? So you're actually... Our worksheets from June. The worksheets are from June. Okay. As of June. Got it. Okay. So there's... Okay. So that's the major expense, the cemetery okay. maintenance, which means if we're doing that, we can't do something else. Uh, and as I said, uh, Paul and Rick are pretty much taking over part of the duties of the yeah. superintendent in terms of dealing with people selling the plots, et cetera. And they've had a lot of help from town employees. I do want to say that. Uh, Pete LeMay has been terrific in terms of helping them. But it would be nice to actually get back to having somebody who knew the job and did the job. Yes. Hi, Ms. Mann. Thanks for stopping by. Um, I know that everybody seems to categorize this as low-hanging fruit, but low-hanging fruit fill up the basket just mm -hmm. as much as anything else. Um, I do have some questions since this is a 92% plus increase mm -hmm. uh, from previous years. Uh, I did have some questions. It looks like from my research, you basically took the numbers from Candia because Candia has a cemetery sextant for $5,000. That's precisely where we got. That's the least so, expensive one we yeah, can find. Yeah, and their, their budget is essentially uh, 40, 
1,000 and change for 2018. I, I um, had no idea what their total budget was. Well, I, I mean, it closely it. resembles what you're asking for at this point. Yeah. Um, Pembroke, and I did some research on this. Pembroke is essentially 28,000, 29,000. Allenstown is a dollar, which doesn't make any sense. Uh, Candia is 41 and change. Uh, Epsom is 11,004. 11, and uh, Nottingham is 18,8, almost 18,9. And Northwood, again, seems somewhat odd that it's only $3,100, but. It probably depends a great deal on the number of cemeteries right. that uh, are town yeah. owned. I would imagine that is the case and uh, the number of people who are utilizing it or, or not utilizing it, I guess. I mean, I, as a former member of the trustees for the trust, I do understand that there's a financial crunch going on at the cemeteries in that the trust funds aren't really sustaining uh, so I, I do get that, um, but I also kind of question the increase uh, uh, of, you know, 93%, 92, 93. Um, the superintendent, you know, I again, you probably just got that from Candia, but I'm wondering if... if uh, the superintendent we did get from Candia. I had no idea what their total budget was. Yeah. One thing I would like to point out is we have been, as have everyone, been working on a default budget for the last several years. Yep. And so this is the actual budget from, what, 2016? Sure. And we have been working with that, which means we have been falling further and further behind in terms of tree maintenance, mm -hmm. cemetery maintenance. As I said, we have actually eliminated some of the cemeteries that were, that were maintained four years ago, five years ago, six years ago are no longer being maintained other than by either people such as Mr. Bilodeau, who may, helps with a neighborhood right, cemetery, right. Yep. or the trustees who go in with their lawnmowers right. and do it. So I know a number of people who volunteered at the cemeteries to mm -hmm. maintain them, and I think the majority of the maintenance was done by volunteers. When did that shift to being a paid position. I, uh, could you repeat your question? Because I want to make sure, sure I, I understand. I know a point. number of volunteers personally who took care of the cemeteries and they did it on a volunteer basis. So there seems to have been a shift away from more volunteerism to let's pay for maintenance and lawn mowing and so forth. Yeah, yeah I, I don't think that's true with regard to the large uh, town-owned cemeteries. Those have always been under contract for maintenance. And while we appreciate and rely heavily on volunteers, one of the concerns that's come up uh, is the tree work. Um, we have a number of historic, uh, you know, pre-Revolutionary War um, stones in Deerfield, uh, particularly, uh, you may recall the uh, dead bull pines that were in the cemeteries right by the fairgrounds. Uh, we were in danger of having those stones destroyed as well as the stone fence. Uh, sort of uh, key to Maureen's point, the primary uh, gentleman behind tree removal, that sort of thing, was uh, the current road agent uh, in his capacity. He didn't bill us for a number of things, uh, trees that he removed, um, gravel work that he did, um, actually rebuilt the road when it washed out on the Meeting House Hill Cemetery. Um, and I think these are the primary costs that the Cemetery Commission is very concerned about. Perpetual care um, on the number of graves we have uh, in, the, in the number of cemeteries that we have uh, is a big nut to swallow and it's been largely ignored and underfunded and there are some serious problems that, that need to be taken care of. But in regard to maintenance and mowing, uh, the, the town has always put the, uh, the mowing uh, and maintenance, uh, spring cleanup, fall cleanup out to bid. And I can tell you as a long-term selectman, if you don't keep those major cemeteries in good shape, you hear about it uh, in short order from hot people who's, uh, Grandparents, great-grandparents, whatever, have been in there and are not receiving the, per the perpetual care that they expected when they paid $400 for a plot 40 years ago. Sure. Is it so, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. So, I mean, to be clear, Maureen said that they're not going to do any tree maintenance this year. Uh, they're not. Correct? Well, in 2019 is in what I In 2019, heard, right? there's not going to be any, tr or 2020, whatever. Well, there no. isn't going to be any no. tree maintenance. That's not what she it's said. Not, so, so, hold on. I, I, I do want to get, so what I understand is that 2019, you guys leveraged budget 
to fill uh, capital our, our gaps. budget in 2019 was 21,000 whatever which meant we had to make choices that's right in order to get the Morrison the parade the Haynes the old center the big cemeteries maintained most of the budget went to that primarily all of it uh, therefore fortunate well it's not fortunate I wish we still had a superintendent of cemetery but we don't fortunately some of the uh, cemetery trustees took on that part of the job but in order to pay the essentially 20000 or whatever it ended sure. up costing to maintain the cemeteries, we're just not doing tree work this year, Un which is going to be a problem, maybe not next year, but... So, so is it fair to say in 2019 you removed the tree removal to compensate for the increased cost? Of this, uh, of the we didn't do any tree removal. Yeah, yeah. You, but you leveraged that budget right. and right. put it over. And then for 2020, we'd there's... like the tree butt done. We'd like we'd like a reasonable amount to pay contractors so we can go back to having all eight cemeteries maintained professionally. We would like a tree budget that would take care of both the trees okay. at this point in Morrison and Parade. I, I, I saw I saw Alden, and I want to give my Alden. question was just the 25 means we can go back to all eight cemeteries maintaining them. All eight cemeteries. Okay. That was my point. And do yeah. so so, I, I mean, don't want to leave this point, so. Yeah, so to be sure, obviously we don't want volunteers taking down trees, right? I mean, <laughs> and that wasn't my point, <laughs> that we don't want volunteers taking down the trees. But I guess my, my, the extension of my question is, what are you doing as a committee to create some volunteerism in town? We have actually put, uh, uh, We've put out notices on the Deerfield page. We've written articles in the forum. For instance, one example is one of these sets of cemeteries given up in terms of maintenance by professional maintenance people that they did up until last year is we went to the fair committee and we asked, you know, the two, the Philbrick and the two cemeteries right on Route 43 near the fair. Mm -hmm. And we went to the fair and we said, could you guys take them over? Uh, we'd really appreciate it. They ultimately agreed, and this year it was a little slow to begin with, but they have maintained those two cemeteries, which is $5,000 or so. Mr. Billadieu has done some maintaining of one of those cemeteries. There are people, multiple people in this town who have gone in and done things like they, that we don't want, there are things we have told them they're not allowed to do. There's a tree up in the Kate Road Cemetery that Mr. Billadu has taken care of that for three years we've been trying to get taken down because it, when it comes down, it's going to hit the wall and it's probably going to hit some monuments. It just hasn't been the first priority tree. Unfortunately, it looks like it, it's going to be a never priority tree. Um, but so we have people doing that. We have a lot of volunteers who are going in, but they're not allowed to touch trees. They're not allowed to move stones. And that makes sense because once you've moved a stone that's fallen over thinking you're going to be helpful, you never know where it came from. They're not allowed to rebuild walls. Uh, and those are state laws. So there are things that they're doing, and they're going in and cutting underbrush at some of the cemeteries. We have over 109 cemeteries in Deerfield. If, um, one perfect example I can give you is if you're going up South Road to that really sharp curve that goes on the left down to Candia, that cemetery is beautifully maintained by Paul Murphy, who's a volunteer. Uh, and he has, in fact, in this last year, become a cemetery trustee because he's interested in helping out with the cemetery. So, I don't know when, and I'm sure it's true that there used to be people, a lot of these cemeteries are on private property, and some owners choose to maintain them. Some are so horribly overgrown, I don't know if they can ever be restored. But there are volunteers. We have done everything we could think of to encourage volunteers, to recruit volunteers, and we've had volunteers taking over some of the cemeteries that used to be professionally maintained. But we can't make people do it. 
No, but, and, and I wouldn't <laughs> expect you to strong arm them to volunteer. No. Um, so my final question actually is you are contemplating floating a warrant article to transfer all the responsibilities. We are to the hoping board. not to do that. Uh, the options in New Hampshire are we could float, float, we could write a warrant article that by law you can choose to have cemetery trustees or you can have the select board and the town become essentially the cemetery trustees. Mm -hmm. We have not submitted the warrant article. We are hoping we don't have to. There are a really dedicated group of cemetery trustees right now. But if we can't afford, if our responsibility is to maintain the cemeteries, and if we can't do it, then we are going to have to do something else. The ideal thing from the trustees' point of view is that if we could just turn over the maintenance part so that when the town puts out bids for maintenance of, you know, Bicentennial Field or, you know, the town offices or the <clears throat> town hall or something, if at the same time they could be putting out bids, it might be, it would be cheaper if someone was interested in doing both the cemeteries and the other stuff. And to us, that seems like a contract and then a com sort of a compromise. Then we could still do the trees. We could still do the dealing with the gravestones. One of the things that's happening is one of the trustees has spent well over a year making a giant spreadsheet of every cemetery in Deerfield, everybody in every cemetery in Deerfield so that that record will be there because those records have not been kept. Uh, and then we could still do that. But if that's not legally possible and we can't get the money to truly maintain the cemeteries the way we should, we don't have, you know, we have $21,000 to mess with, so to speak. The town has more than that, and I know this sounds, I don't know how it sounds, but the town is in a position that they can maybe move $5,000 from one line to another line because they've got the entire budget. So we don't want to do the warrant article, but we are considering it if it looks like there's no other way to really maintain the cemeteries. Zach, you said that. Uh, yeah, so thank you for uh, all the effort. I know there's been a tremendous amount of work you guys have done. Um, quite frankly, we need to maintain the town's properties. So at the end of the day, we need to maintain it. So my question actually is for uh, Mr. Robertson, if that's okay. Yep. Um, where we're looking at, you know, $25,000 of maintenance for cemeteries. We're looking at a chunk of maintenance for town buildings. We're looking at a, a block of maintenance for parks and rec. Has the town considered uh, adding an additional person to the, uh, say, the highway staff, buying a couple of small pieces of equipment and taking that work in-house? Because as we go through this budget, if we start tallying up the, those costs across the board for the contracts, it may become practical to look at that. Yeah, we have certainly discussed that. Um, and I'll give you the... The conversation has come down typically starting with Parks and Rec and the amount of mowing we've done there. And I believe we still have some mowing equipment in Parks and Rec. It's still functional um, for, well, it's aging. And uh, the former Parks and Rec director uh, did quite a bit of mowing himself in and around what was contracted. Um, the other area we've looked at is whether we want to have our own equipment uh, for roadside mowing. Um, you don't. Track. We don't, but um, the road agent has, uh, I, I think, generally advised us that uh, it would it would eat a lot more money than we're presently uh, spitting out on our contracts, um, and that's essentially how we've looked at the additional person and owning our own mowing equipment, maintenance equipment. That when we've actually looked at numbers, it, it looks like it has the potential to cost us considerably more um, than contracting. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, again, Andy, um, I thought last year we had suggested bundling a couple of the 
long bids. The fire the fire department's got to clean their fire holes, and I thought that was bundled. Right. The time. Uh, we did indeed bundle a number of things, and I, I don't believe we bundled any of the cemetery, though. No. We, we didn't, but we did bundle um, Parks and Rec, um, some of the fire hole uh, mowing and also things like uh, we, we've got some incidental pieces that sort of fall in the middle that would be like gazebo field um, those type of things out here in front of the gbw uh, and again those things are more expensive than the budget committee or the board of selectmen are used to seeing in prior years um, the former maintenance person uh, had his own landscaping equipment and thought nothing of doing two or three town parcels with his own mowing equipment and submitting uh, no bill for it if he thought it made the town look better. Um, that had gone on for a number of years, and with his uh, departure, uh, we, we spent considerably more on mowing contracts, um, even with the bundling, than we had in years past. Follow up, so is there an opportunity this year to add the cemetery with that bundle? I, I believe there is. Um, I, I, you know, I don't know uh, with regard to RSAs, that sort of thing, if there's anything that inhibits that, but I don't believe there is, and we could certainly do that. I will say that I would suspect that uh, the people interested in doing the cemeteries are probably already bidding on or doing the town property, so. Yeah. And, and we didn't have an, we, we don't have an overwhelming bid response. Uh, town mowing includes the transfer station um, and the, uh, the sealed landfill, which is, is probably the larger portion um, of the mowing, um, as well as the recreational fields around town now. It would seem that the timing is off for the bid process versus transferring funds from here to the bid process. Correct. I mean, it, it's. I mean, we have to look at this budget now, right? And either approve or disapprove. But the yep. the bid system won't really come into play until next year. And next spring, and right. we start the bid process in the spring. And we, if you know, if it's a viable option, we can certainly include the cemeteries in our bid process and the Board of Selectmen has the ability to move money from the cemetery budget. Um, you know, I, I think there's a potential savings uh, if we had one contractor or two contractors that did the whole thing, but I don't see, I think it would be fairly negligible. I don't think you're going to see, uh, you know, a third of that I, I think the request go away the, if we grant yeah, it to one contractor. Yeah, the intricacy of the mowing and the maintenance is just going to be time consuming. Or no matter who does it. It's tough because of the stones um, and because of the historic nature of Deerfield cemeteries. It's not like mowing the transfer station or buzzing around the ball field in 20 minutes with the biggest swivel mower you've got. Um, okay. There's a couple of them that, because uh, I, I worked for the company that mowed them 20 years ago, and there's a few of them that only a bush mower will fit in. Right. It's, right. It can be quite labor intensive. Uh, so on cemetery budget approval, do we have a motion to move approval? We have we, a motion, we have a motion we have and a second motion. on the yeah. we have a second. So just a vote. Yeah. Okay, all those in favor of the uh, cemetery budget for a total of uh, forty-one thousand four hundred and one dollars, uh, please say please raise your hand by and say aye. 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 Okay, all those um, that are. Uh, not in approval. Opposed. One opposed. Thank you. All right. Uh, so with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, eight to one. Um, I guess we move to approve the cemetery budget. Thank, thank, you. thank you for your time, Ms. Man. Okay. On to, okay. Um, You've got people from the Conservation Commission nope. and from Emergency Management and Welfare Administration here. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I was looking up. The, the next one was Miss Waring. I don't, Miss Waring. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm not Miss Waring. Okay. <laughs> so why don't we, yep. So supervisors of the checklist, which is page five. All right. 
I would move the supervisors of the checklist uh, budget in the amount of five thousand fifty-four dollars. Second. Second. All right. So it was moved by Mr. Robertson and well seconded by Mr. Dubianski. Okay. And I would defer to the supervisor of the checklist for explanation and. Well, I think it's pretty simple to, <laughs> when you look at it, why it's going to increase. It's very but. straightforward. Do you mind just introducing yourself? Sure. I'm Maureen Quinn. I'm one of the three supervisors of the checklist. Thank you, Ms. Quinn. So the, the main uh, difference between the 2019 budget and the 2020 budget is the um, significant increase in the number of elections that are happening in 2020. So the man hours or uh, person hours to cover those elections. Um, bumps the budget up by more than 100%. There's also um, the request, I think last year we had also requested a laptop, but it was not approved. Um, I believe that the IT director in town is trying to get new software, um, operating system software and all the systems, and our laptop is not capable of taking that new system. So we're hoping to be able to replace the laptop is this, part is, of the, is this part of the town Windows 10 upgrade? It, I, this was not included in our present upgrade that we're doing out of this year's budget, but I think it's the same okay. situation going forward into the next budget. And yeah. If you look in your backup, we have $500 yeah. uh, proposed for the... And, and this is a laptop upgrade, which you will... I mean, laptops intrinsically don't have the processing of regular desktops, but I assume this will cover everything that you guys will need. And whatever would make us compatible with the rest of the town. Okay. Right. And I believe it's part of a bulk purchase, so we get a better price for, what, you know, what we're asking for. Okay. Are there, any questions? I was just going to move the vote. It's not like we can change how many elections we have next year. <laughs> sure. Seems traceable. Okay. All those in favor of the supervisors of the checklist. Raise your hand by saying aye. 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 And all those opposed? Okay, Thank unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. So, eight, two, one, nine to zero. Okay, nine to zero. Okay, running down the list. Um, so, zoning board. Eric is here. Um, okay, Josh Conservation Commission. Page 76. I would make a motion I like to move the actually. Conservation Commission budget in the amount of $3,341. Second. All right, so that was a motion to approve by Mr. Robertson. And hopefully that's the right amount, uh, Mr. Berglund. Go ahead. <laughs> there was a minor adjustment made uh, a couple of three weeks ago. And, all right, so what was the, can you just repeat the number that you said, Andy? Uh, the figure that I moved was $3,341. Okay. And if that needs to be amended, I'm assuming that Mr. Berglund will let me know. Okay. Good evening. Eric Berglund's my name. And uh, Conservation Commission is uh, seeking, as Andy mentioned, 3341 about an increase of 570 over last, last year's, um, which was a default budget. Um, and a, I think a couple hundred, a higher amount was sought last year, and, but we ended up with a default. A um, couple of uh, items under a legal, uh, you probably have on your uh, expenditure a total $767. Is that, is that what you're seeing? Mm -hmm. Yep, yes. Is expended. And that was uh, incorrect. Uh, money was charged to the operating account or the operating budget for legal costs, but should have been should have gone to the conservation fund, which is maintained by the um, uh, Conservation Commission for land protection solely, uh, acquiring uh, conservation easements and also any legal expenses. And so, in that in this case, these were uh, legal services to support that. So. That is uh, coming out, and that will be a, a reduced expense there um, as far as this year. So we continue with the $300 uh, for next year. Um, 
I don't think there's, well, you can see, uh, again, we had, uh, I guess I just want to ask you for whatever questions you have. Um, sure, Mr. Von Hassel. So uh, the allocation should be reversed back to where you, you said you, you had a misallocation or things were charged. There's a separate the conservation fund. Okay. Which so is not here. It's not part of this budget. It's okay, so it's not oh, lines. It's not, it's it's not, not the line there. that ends in six nine one, which is about two thirds of the way down the line. Conservation list. fund is, uh, for lack of a better uh, example, it's like the Parks and Rec revolving fund. It is separate from the budget, revolves year to year, uh, does not go back to the general fund, and is earmarked for land conservation. So, and the costs of so, so the actuals in twenty nineteen is one thousand two hundred forty five minus seven hundred sixty seven. That should be right. There. Uh, I didn't hear that. Three thousand. So, sorry. So the the actual for 2019 is 1,245 minus 767. What's that? Uh, are you talking about the total or are you? The yeah, total the, expenditure. Yeah, the total expenditure is two one uh, 1,245.44, and should we back out that 767.39 for the legal services or? Is a portion of that still? No, that's that is, as I said, that belonged in the. That backs out that's completely. That's a, 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 a debit to the conservation fund, so it's being moved out. It's just a, a just the legal fund. Uh, the legal varies, you know. And three hundred dollars is, is a bare minimum, actually, and we've exceeded that in the past for the conservation commission. So this year it happens to be uh, on the. You know, we didn't expend all of that. So, um, but I didn't hear the question from the chair. Were you talking about the total for the year? Sorry, yeah, I, 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 sorry to have interrupted Mr. Van Hassel. I just piggybacking on his question, and I think you answered it. The 1,245 is um, artificially high because of the misbilling, as in the 767 should not be on this page. And so oh, yeah. the actual should be roughly five hundred dollars. Well, the, yeah. Well, plus a yeah. dollar seventeen. But yeah. Okay. Well, I, I didn't quite. I, I think there there is a a small item in a small amount in the legal line, and I have it. Um, it I I think I heard see. Eric say that not all of the seven sixty seven came out of the, of that conversation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he doesn't have the numbers, whether he has the numbers or not. Um, it's yeah, it's just, it's. Uh, yeah. When the next version comes out, I think it's a moot discussion at this point. I he's would agree. Right. That, he's admitting that some charge went to the wrong column, and now they're going to take that charge out. And if it's five sixty-two or seven seventy-two or four forty-eight, it doesn't matter. The point is that line was not overspent. It right. appears that way on the on the on the, it, the worksheet. It, yeah, Zach. So really, the only significant increase, um, and it's four hundred ninety dollars, is just your part-time secretary uh, line, which is yes. Like, so is that for uh, change of pay? Is that for additional hours? Is that is there additional? It's it's a change in the pay rate. Yes. Okay. Based on performance and uh, the current economic situation. Yeah, and, that, and that's moving it to eighteen dollars an hour. Okay. And and as if I could, yeah. as we've discussed at this committee, um, I know people sometimes look at this and think, "My goodness, that's an awful lot for recording secretary for meetings." But in order to get people interested in doing it, you have to keep the rate up there because the meetings are fairly infrequent and there's not enough hours. So if you're going to get someone to come out after dinner, and then spend some time putting your minutes together, you, you have to make it somewhat worthwhile. They're not going to do it for. Seven dollars an hour. Well, let me just I mean, add a little bit to that. In this instance, this person is is more than that uh, that set of skills. Uh, she's a um, very active member, even though she's not a commission member. But without her help, <laughs> we've got so much going on between land protection and uh, all the projects we have. We need somebody to sort of pull it together, and so she does a lot of that. Uh, interaction with land trusts and uh, New Hampshire uh, Conservation Commission. You know, 
for the state. And so That's on. great. So. Okay. Any other questions? All right. All those in favor of the Conservation Commission budget for uh, $3,341. Raise your hand. Signify by saying aye. 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 One, two, three, four. Okay, all those opposed? Okay. Names Thank you. Nine to zero. Thank you, Mr. Bergman. Okay, so emergency management, welfare administration, agencies, health and social. Ms. Greg. <coughs> Separate. Yeah. And we'll start on page 40, which I think is emergency management. Me. Me too. <laughs> I would uh, move the emergency management budget in the amount of $41,939. Second. There's a motion from Mr. Robertson, second by Mr. Langlois. And I would defer to Denise Craig and Kevin for a walkthrough or questions. Good evening, Denise Hi. Craig, uh, Co-Emergency Management Director. Kevin Barry, Co-Emergency Management Director. Hi, um, welcome. You're looking, when you go, going, to, going through the budget, uh, Basically, there are some major increases this year. Uh, the, the first one we see is the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the, um, for the, the generator at the, the school, at the, behind the Deerfield Community School, is basically, um, was bought under a grant quite a, quite a few years ago, a Homeland Security grant. And we have a, a memorandum of understanding that the town will, will maintain the um, uh, the maintenance agreement for that generator, such a, such a generator, which basically um, is twenty three hundred dollars for next next year. It's part of a three year contract, yeah. and also we found out this year that uh, the state, um, I think it's the environmental services, okay. is requiring uh, the generator be to be licensed every year. Uh, we have not licensed it since we put it in there because the state did not tell us it had to be licensed. It also has to be maintained on a specific schedule, doesn't it, in conjunction with that licensing? I believe so, yes. And so we have a, um, a, a, a four-year license for the state is uh, $2,000. And so we anticipate, also we anticipate about $3,000 for, uh, for the maintenance of the generator. What happens a lot of times is we uh, split the the cost of any any maintenance repair of the, of the generator itself with the school. If something happens mid year, you know, we we split it because obviously, if there's a power failure in a non emergency situation, the school will benefit from it. You know, they can still have they can still have school, which which is great for the town. But obviously, if we have a, a situation, we have to util utilize that as a shelter. We have that facility, and part of the MOU is that the town is liable for any cost of the uh, for the use of the generator, any fuel, any, any food, stuff like that, used at the school during the emergency. Um, the next line, the diesel, you know, the next line, but the next one that is changed, major change is the the emergency, the diesel for diesel fuel for the generator. It went down this year uh, because of the um, the bid for the fuel went down from last year. And uh, emergency management equipment, uh, we have uh, due to the uh, Rockingham County um, change in the, uh, the, mo the modulation requirements of the radios, um, in the, uh, basically this year and next year, uh, we have to replace the base radio. There's actually a base radio at the, at the school and also actually here, the one, the, our cost here is for the one upstairs at the uh, Emergency Operations Center and for the reprogramming of two, two portable uh, <coughs> radios that we have. And I believe that is the, um, 
The uh, next year we're also anticipating a EMPG for a town EO upgrade um, renewal of the uh, EOP emergency operations plan for the town to the cost of ten thousand um, dollars. But once we uh, apply for a grant, receive the grant, it's fifty percent uh, payback from the state. And then we have an EMPG for uh, commu emergency communications that we're going to request for uh, for, this, for the uh, equipment upstairs for thirteen thousand dollars, which hopefully fifty percent reimbursed. Can you can you spell out EMPG for me, please? Emergency Management uh, Performance Grant. Okay, thank you. So, anyways, so the that twenty three thousand one dollars that will be offset into the general fund. I'm sorry, the twenty three thousand one dollars on the EM grant line that's offset with uh, into the general fund when the, with the when the grant money is received yes okay and how confident are you of the grant money being received 100 percent okay we've been very lucky in the past any other questions regarding emergency management Okay. All those in favor of the proposed budget, 41,939, please raise your hand to the five by saying aye. Aye. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. It's unanimous. Nine, two, zero. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, okay. Welfare Administration, page 64. I would move the uh, Welfare Administration and General Assistance Budget in the amount of $71,081. Second. Uh, good evening. Uh, there's a little change in uh, the level. I think the only increase is a slight bump up in the um, employee line as a result of um, the cost of living adjustment. The uh, other lines are basically remain the same. Um, fortunately, we are in a position where we've had um, fairly stable numbers in terms of the usage of, a, of general assistance appropriations. Um, the difficulty there is that because we do face an incredibly tight rental market at this point in time. Um, we're down to zero to one percent vacancy rate in Rockingham County. Um, the housing crunch, I'm sure you're all aware of. Um, so although we are fortunate that the numbers have been down over the past year, that is one of those lines that has potential for bumping up significantly. Um, any questions? Or? Mr. Robertson. Yeah, I have no question, but I would uh, say to the board that uh, given the qualification, um, the qualifications that uh, Denise brings to this position and the time that she puts into the position, this is a ridiculously minuscule amount uh, that we're paying her. Uh, you did a CBA on what we get from Ms. Gregg uh, for what we pay her. Um, the, the town and the community are are far ahead in the in the game. Well, thank you. <laughs> it's excellent. Okay. Any more questions or comments? Okay. All those in favor of approving the welfare administration budget for seventy one thousand eighty one dollars, please raise your hand and signify by saying aye. All right. Aye. aye. Nine to zero. Perfect. Okay. And on to agencies, health and social, page 62, which is not two pages back. <laughs> there we go. Okay. We, um, so I will be uh, speak. Ms. Ms. Gray, I'm I sorry. Think we need to make a motion. Let me um, let me move the um, agency's health and social budget amount in the uh, budget line in the amount of thirty eight thousand eight hundred and sixteen dollars. Second. And then defer. That was a three way tie. So <laughs> <laughs> let's give it to Mr. Dill today. Okay. Authority of the chair. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Always give it to Mr. Dill. <laughs> 
Okay, Ms. Craig. Uh, yes, uh, so what we have, um, I will speak to the lower half, uh, the 810 line, social service agencies. Uh, pretty much what we have is a um, no change. Uh, level funding is requested for these nonprofits which provide uh, direct and support services to the residents of the town, both on a 24-7 basis. Um, they provide services to our particularly vulnerable populations in town, uh, the elderly, families, young children. And um, with their services, they enable our town services, such as fire rescue and the police uh, support and the efforts that they make. Uh, okay, yeah, the other one's physicals. Okay, Mr. Robertson. Yeah, and I would um, note that we do, or uh, Denny receives uh, reports from most of these agencies. A number of them outline exactly how many people or, or what resources they have uh, utilized for the community of Deerfield. Um, so that they're not just uh, random picks by any means. Um, and as far as the uh, employee physicals and testing, that is uh, for uh, employment required physicals, uh, drug testing, that type of thing. So, Basically, no other place to put it. So. Yep. Uh, I, I, not being familiar with all the agencies on here, do we have drug related agencies that we also fund that, that help? Uh, the members of Deerfield? Um, well, in their own way, many of them do have drug-related related services, whether it's um, uh, the many of the child-based sure. nonprofits deal with issues. Ch uh, what's now called Waypoint, which is formerly Child and Family Services. Okay. So yes, a number of them do with, deal with, with the issue, not necessarily head on but tangentially yeah okay thank you lamprey healthcare and community action also s provides ports and so you go as well. and yeah okay perfect thank you okay any more questions or comments uh, mr bill so why are we going up from 52 this is to andy from 5200 to 9700 on our physicals and drug testing do we have more employees uh can you Give some detail on the schedule of. If you go to your detail sheet, yep. on behind you'll see that that is related to the National Fire Protection Agency physicals. Uh, recent legislation passed last year, last the, year correct, yeah. which enables uh, people in the fire protection service who do become ill as a result of their profession uh, can collect um, uh, funding to help treat their illness, but it requires a baseline physical from the start in order to determine whether or not any illness was caused through their prior fire protection uh, service or before that are unrelated. And those dollars are put in there to hopefully begin those physicals. And uh, John Dubianski may be able to give you more information on that. Uh, from the fire perspective. So, so the nine that's on here are is to reflect the nine part-time firefighters that we have in town. That's nine physicals. It's a start. It doesn't cover everyone. Okay. So, so basically, what happened is New, New Hampshire, uh, well, actually nationally now, they've recognized cancer as a uh, line of duty injury for firefighters. Um, it's actually rapidly becoming one of the top killer slash afflictions that end firefighters' careers. Um, so it's for, it's for all of our firefighters. There's a preliminary, a very detailed preliminary physical you have to have before you qualify for this benefit. Uh, it involves uh, chest x-rays, EKGs, um, much more than a typical physical. Uh, and there already have been, so it is, it is kind of urgent because there already have been cases where the insurance companies have fought and tried to deny uh, coverage for a firefighter who you know, was a non-smoker but came down with lung cancer after being a firefighter for 20 years. Um, because of the lack of a baseline uh, to, to show they were otherwise healthy. So um, just to understand this, wouldn't that be a function of either a workers' comp or the health insurer to perform that baseline exam? No, it's not. As, as I understand it, it is a function of the, the fire department or the municipality to provide the baseline. 
that's beyond me. I don't know the answer to that one. Hmm. I don't know the answer to that one. I mean, in, I, it would seem that if it's a worker comp related or work injury disease, this whatever. Is a separately funded this is a, a separate fund from workers comp. It's specific to fire rescue personnel. Okay. Are, are firefighters and EMTs not covered by workers comp? Uh, firefighters and EMTs are covered by workers comp. Okay. This is also for long term. I mean, this could be 10 years after that you develop cancer. Well, after 10 years after you retire, you develop cancer. And, and I would assume they still need that baseline to determine. As it was presented to us, and I know I think probably the best person to get this information from is this, this came to the Board of Selectmen through the fire chief uh, in conjunction with state recommendations um, for how to move forward on this. So yeah, he's well, been to the training on it, so he definitely has. Uh, when we have the fire chief here, I, and I can give him a heads up that you know, he needs to bring us some more specific information about the process. It would, it would just seem to align with a workers' comp. I know that it is, it is separate and above and beyond workers' comp. It's a, okay. it's a specific funding mechanism for line of duty loss for firefighters. Okay. Other questions or comments? Seeing none. All those in favor of approving the agency's health and social budget for uh, $38,816, please raise your hand to the president. Aye. 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 One, two, three, four. Aye. Okay. Nine. Uh, yeah. Eight, yeah. Eight? I, I would like to come back and revisit this again. Yep. I will. And at, I'll at certainly. At a later date give when, when uh, the fire chief is here. We have I, him on I'm, the not I'm not, I, I just want to be able to understand why this isn't tied into workers comp. Uh, can, we, can we just get through the vote before we yeah, okay. go through this? So we have nine, right? So you were, yeah. you were a yay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, so nine time. zero. Ms. Greg, thank you so much. Thank you all. Okay, yeah, and on to sure. your, you'd like to review as, this. As long as we can come back to this at a later date and discuss it. Is that, is that a, a, a request that you can make? Um, Absolutely. Fisher? Um, I'll talk to the fire chief. He has the Captain specifics Fisher, yeah. of the program and, um, and have him prepared to present when he's here for the fire budget. Okay. Okay. Um, so, Mr. Harrington, uh, so the one, the only one that we missed today uh, was zoning board, correct? Okay, so we'll have to work on rescheduling him. But since you're here, why don't we start with Executive uh, Ambulance Forestry Commission and Debt Services, but specifically Executive First, starting on page one. And yeah, Mr. I'd, Robertson. I would move the Executive uh, Budget for 2020 in the amount of $17,501. Second. Okay, so Andy Robertson, Zach Langlois. Okay, Mr. Robertson, are you going to speak to that? Um, I am. I can. That's basically the selectman salaries, um, treasurer's uh, salary. Uh, we've got a dollar in the merit increase line. We haven't used that line for years, but we keep a dollar in there. For some reason, we needed it. And the, uh, we've got uh, money in there for the trustee of the trust funds, and this is for trust fund maintenance. Uh, and this is essentially us paying the maintenance fees. Um, on the trust funds and probably Mr. Von Hassel is uh, as capable or considerably more capable than me if there are questions uh, regarding that uh, given his role. So so my only question regarding that is that it on the detail sheet it says stipend paid yearly to the chair only 10,000 for trust fund maintenance. Yep. It seems to indicate that the that the $10,000 is a yearly thing but obviously we haven't been spending it yearly. It's management so it's new. Yeah, it's so relatively new. new that was uh, implemented last year okay. when we realized that the cemeteries and so forth were not sustaining, uh, the funds were not spinning off the necessary capital to do the things that we needed to do um, as the trustees and maintain the trust funds and pay the, <clears throat> pay the uh, at that point, I think it's still Cambridge trust right the management uh, fees Cambridge trust was charging us management fees and in the past we were 
uh, paying those management fees out of the trust fund uh, revenues that were spun off. Uh, primary component of that was the cemeteries which started creating a negative uh, revenue. So this was an attempt to essentially give the cemeteries a breather, uh, to allow them to catch up. But, you know, fingers crossed, we're not sure. So is this percentage based or fixed fee? Uh, I do not have the breakdown on the fees that I don't okay. believe John is. We can probably get that information from the trustees of the trust fund if you'd like okay. it. Yeah. I, just more of curiosity than. I don't know if they've changed the you know the method for uh, uh, for charging the fees but I don't know. but looking into the future we expect this 10,000 to happen yearly five, now. five years I believe I, I think yeah the plan we discussed was for five we years planned it for five years for the town to take over the uh, $10,000 cemetery um, funding for ten, five years but, but it's not it's not sorry uh, yes mr. Bilodeau we should call and ask the trustees of the trust funds. Why aren't the trustees of the trust funds here defending this ten thousand um, dollars? Well, I, I think that they assumed that the board of selectmen could, uh, board of selectmen's rep could defend it. It's for the management fees of the trust fund, as um, Bill explained, and it was a five-year plan that was put together. We agreed to put the management fees in the budget for five years, uh, in an attempt to basically bolster the cemetery. Uh, trust fund money, which so, so am I hearing that next year there'll be ten thousand, and the following year there'll be ten thousand, and the following year there'll be ten thousand, the following year there'll be ten thousand for that's, five years. That's yes, minus, that's what yeah. we've agreed to. Yeah, okay. that's what was agreed How much to last we paying year. Last year, when it came out of the cemetery, I believe we based the, this fee on what we had lost that year uh, in management fees from the actual funds or the fund revenue. I I sat here last year and it was a major confusion on what trust fund was doing and the trustees sat there and said oh no we gave you the wrong one so actually I think I'm, the trustees I'm a little, I'm a little <laughs> I think that John and I actually gave you the wrong sheet uh, not the trustees uh, and it wasn't it wasn't incorrect information it just wasn't all the trust funds uh, correct the you you were you uh, yes the the full listing of trust funds was not provided last year which we did so, provide we after did that ultimately end up providing it okay wouldn't means. wouldn't this figure come at the same time that we look at all of those trust funds and see what's happening well uh, logistically it has to appear on this line in the budget so that's why it's showing up in the executive budget uh, with this line item number uh, we can certainly that when the trustees of the trust fund are here, we can uh, come back and review this, but uh, it's here by budgeting protocol. You can motion to table it until then if you want, Phil. So. Table until we meet with the trustees of the trust funds. All right, so there's a motion to I'll table second. the oh, discussion. Actually, Brad did. Okay, so motion to table um, the general fund executive until a member of the trustee of the trust funds can address this, this yeah. issue. Do we have them on the schedule? Oh. Oh, that's by, so the motion was made by Phil Bilodeau and seconded by Bradley Briggs. They don't have a budget, so they're not on the schedule. Uh, this is the only charge they have okay. for their activity that the Board of Selectmen agreed to take over for five years to yeah. give some time for the trust fund to, lack of another word, heal and gain some interest to hopefully be self-sustainable again. That's the only reason this is showing up here. And this budget line was already in existence. And the only way to, we would have to create a whole new budget for itself and get permission from DRA to add it an, uh, another line. This is was already here, so we put it here. Okay, Mr. Robertson. Uh, yeah, I'm, if the committee wants to hear from the trustees, they've been very agreeable and uh, typically have been happy to show up and explain to the budget committee or the board of selectmen uh, exactly what's going on with the trust funds. So. Okay. 
I, I, you know, I think having served as the trustee of trust funds last year when this agreement was struck, I, th I think it's uh, somewhat counterproductive to go back now and say uh, we want to pull the rug out from underneath this agreement. Um, and uh, it basically calls into doubt uh, the sustainability of the cemeteries, which was the overall plan in the first place. So uh, I would not be in agreement with tabling this because uh, I think it sends the wrong message to the trustees of the trust funds, and it also deals with a number of trusts uh, that are in jeopardy. Okay. Mr. Bilodeau. That's not what I said. I didn't say that I didn't trust the trustees of the trust fund. I never said you did. It sounded that way. Well, I'm sorry, but that's not what I said. Okay. What I said was I complete, we struck an agreement. I have complete well, faith please. in the trustees. What I said is we please. struck an agreement. I have Mr. complete Mr. Sure. Finish, please. I, Thank you. And I'm not advocating that this goes away. I just want an explanation. I, I believe the trustees explained that last year, but if you need that reinforced, I'm sure I, they can come back. It just didn't come up last year. I don't recall. I believe it did, and it, it's the, the explanation is, is fairly straightforward. It is the management fees that Cambridge Trust charges us for the management of our trust funds. Okay. I'll, I'll apologize for anything that I've said no, if you're telling me this is the second year of this $10,000. It Last is. year we were in default, so it never made it onto the budget. It didn't make it onto the budget because so then of the it default. came from somewhere. Yeah, it was it was on last year. The budget failed. Okay, so, so that's why where, I saw it. So where did they get the ten thousand dollars? They would have depleted the fund again. This it would have been a. So it came out of the trust fund. My understanding would be. Do we have the accounting for that, John? And that that was just absorbed by the rest of the budget. Okay. That's the only choice we have in a default budget. Okay. But it was paid. It was paid. Okay. Not by the trust fund. Of, point of order. Which okay. was the in original intent. All right, so the 10000 is, although new on this budget sheet, it is not a new expense. This is the second year of the This is the second year. Charge. So does that mean going into 2020 of this five-year agreement, it would technically be the second year of the five-year agreement? Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So the... I would have my motion to table. Okay. I was going to say... The, there's, I was going to say there's a motion on the table... Uh, we can vote on it. He withdrew it. He withdrew it. I, I withdraw it. Will the second withdraw? I withdraw it. Okay. Thank so you. the motion to table the discussion has been withdrawn, which brings us back to the first motion of approval of the Executive General Fund. Can I, I just? Yeah, Mr. What, Langlois. Just a quick question, um, and this kind of circles back to that 10,100, but indirectly. So obviously there's a concern and if we've we, if we took care of the 10100 elsewhere in the budget, we didn't deplete the trust funds. But should we be looking at uh, additional ways to bolster those trust funds? Should, is it, and I apologize. Is, there, is it possible to put a warrant article in to, to add 25000 or 50000 to that trust fund to try to get it so it can be self-sustaining again? I'm not going to speak for the trustees, but I would say that that's up to them. To make that decision. Um, and I think when we talked with the trustees, we talked about funding mechanisms, and this seemed to be an easy compromise that would not involve. Uh, at the time we did that, uh, the $10,000 was a number that we agreed upon would not be onerous to the town, um, but yet still give some breathing room to the cemetery specifically so that. Uh, they could kind of recoup some of the expenditures. Um, many of the cemeteries, uh, getting back to what Maureen said, many of the cemeteries are full, and they're not spinning off any revenue whatsoever, but yet they're still having to be maintained. Uh, and, and so as that happens, and Deerfield is not unique, a uh, number of the small towns with cemeteries that are practically full, um, especially the older ones, are facing this problem. Um, we chose to look at this, and again, I'm speaking for myself, uh, not for the trustees, because I'm no longer a trustee, but we chose to look at this as um, a temporary fix at best uh, to try and maybe buy some time for us to figure out uh, how to deal with this. So, it, oh, Ms. yeah. 
Yeah, so it, it, it's sounding like the in the long term we're probably going to have to be exploring a different way to finance maintaining our cemeteries because it's just that if if there's not going to be space to sell, well, then that fund's going to not be able to sustain itself. Exactly, but the trustees again, my experience. Our hands were tied. Yeah, it's a topic for another day. Well, it's well, it's a, what I'm well, to say. Our, yeah. our hands were tied in that we can't liquidate the trusts. Right. We can't merge the trusts. We are up against the wall. Yeah, I guess my point is sort of a topic for another day. You know, this yeah. is a band aid fix we've right. got in this, it, it in was, this budget. You know, it was a way to kind of maybe look back and say, okay, maybe the laws will change with regards to how the trusts can be dealt with. Um, but we don't have the answer right now. Mr. Robertson. Yeah, and I think we, you've seen part of the process of working towards the cemetery problem this evening with a fairly sharp increase in the yeah. cemetery budget. Um, Probably just have to become part of the town budget to maintain those properties, I, period. Some, at some point, I think they'll have to be merged into the town budget. Yeah. Um, but again, we still have those handcuffs as to how the trusts for the different family members were set up, were handcuffed. Well, I was at the time. Maybe um, something's changed. My question is probably a little bit more trivial, but in the event that we have a default budget in 2020, this $10,000 will once again be withdrawn from somewhere else in the budget? To the best of our ability. Yeah, um, okay. You know, it, it depends on whether we get a default budget and largely upon weather okay. as to whether we have the ability to do that or not. That's, and that sounds trite, but weather is what determines whether we've got any surplus in the budget or not pretty right. much every year. Okay. Okay. Um, any more questions or comments on the executive budget? Uh, all those in favor of the executive budget for a total of seventeen thousand five hundred and one dollars, please raise your hand and signify aye. 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 Uh, nine to zero. Okay. Uh, ambulance, page thirty-two. Yeah, I would uh, move the ambulance budget in the amount of thirteen thousand dollars. Second. And I would note that this is a set contract, as I've explained any number of times since the mid '90s, <laughs> that uh, we've uh, contracted with the ambulance service in Raymond. Um, it is uh, the late '60s. Yeah, it, it's a phenomenal price um, for the contract. Um, Certainly, much much cheaper than having our own ambulance service. Uh, <laughs> All right. So, so the motion was started by Andy Robertson, Zach, seconded by Zach Langlois. Sorry, yes, sir. you guys are a lot faster than me in terms of flipping pages. Okay. This is the last year of the contract. I would note too, and we will have to renegotiate this year going forward. Uh, hopefully, we get to renegotiate and are not put in a position where we have to consider buying an ambulance. We would, we would have to. I mean, we we could not start an ambulance program yeah. in a year. We would have to get somebody else's ambulance Correct. and put it in a, yeah, we would the just, barn space that we don't have for someone else's. Not even ambulance. just getting our own people on board and transitioning from a first response service to a transport service would take more than a year. Touchy subject. Well, it's just it's reality. <laughs> Okay, any questions regarding the ambulance budget? Oh, or additional comments? All right, all those in favor of the ambulance budget for $13,000, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 So, 9 0. Okay, on to Forestry Commission, page 77. Could I just ask one question about the ambulance thing? Yes, I sir. know it's out of line, but um, so we do have. Um, Cindy, right, um, running the emergency services. She's the rescue right? squad She's captain. rescue squad. So what's the difference between risk? I mean... So if you call 911 in Deerfield for a medical emergency, we are dispatched, fire rescue is dispatched with Raymond Ambulance and possibly X-ray LS depending on a couple of factors. Okay. So the fire rescue provides a first response. We come out, we, we're a listed ALS service. 
Um, so we have EMTs, advanced, and paramedics that are on our on our service. Who's available depends on the day. And um, but we Deerfield does not have the capability to transport. So all of anybody who's transported from Deerfield is transported by an outside service. 95% of the time, it's Raymond Ambulance. We also use Epsom, Northwood, Tritown, Epping, uh, depending on circumstance and ambulance availability. <laughs> depending on car accidents on Route 101. Correct, yeah. <laughs> so we can't transport? We are not licensed to transport. Licensed. We don't have a vehicle that would accommodate it, unless you're a lot smaller than me. Okay. Okay, sorry. Forestry Commission, page 77. I would move the Forestry Commission budget in the amount of $1. Uh, $6? I got $6. $6. Oh, I'm sorry, $6. Second. Our now we're going to have to talk about it. <laughs> okay. The, Did more trees? So, grow? motion uh, by Andy Robertson, seconded by Zach Langlois. Yeah, and I would note that uh, we keep this line, you know, with the, the lines with the well, dollar in them so we can use them if we have to. We would typically, <coughs> I don't believe we have any forestry commission members at this point. We would typically work in conjunction with the town forester um, and the conservation commission um, if we had a forestry project moving forward. Okay. Questions, comments? Okay, all those in favor of the Forestry Commission line item for $6, please raise your hand and signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, nine. What's that? I'm struggling with that one. I was going to recommend a 1,000% increase, but. <laughs> well, wait till you get to debt service. Okay, so. There's a math joke in there somewhere. Debt service, uh, pages 79 through 84. There would be no reason to move that because it has been zero for quite some time now. And now I get the math jokes. Okay. 90, 80, 81, 82, 83. And, oh, zero percent change? You have a dollar 80, on 83. 83, there's a dollar amount on 83. For your tax anticipation note. Oh, I'm sorry. Note. In case we need a tax anticipation note, which God help us, <laughs> we do, um, I would move the um, um, amount of a dollar. Second. Second. <laughs> I believe our last debt service was the, is it the fire engine or the closure of the transfer station. We may have had some debt service on a fire truck after the closure of the transfer station. That's about it. We have not done any bonding or long-term debt for a long time in Deerfield. Okay. All those in favor of the oh, debt services, uh, I guess tax anticipation. tax anticipation note for one dollar. Please raise your hand and signify by saying aye. 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 Four. All nine. <coughs> nine to zero. You know, with a twenty dollar bill, we could wipe half these pages out of this. Book. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, even I, I believe, you know, if we had to go for a tax anticipation note, the DRA yeah, would more you than likely ask. forgive the fact that we had we left a dollar out of the line. But nine when there are ten of us here voting, uh, you not vote? I. Make or break. Make or break. Okay. Yeah. Make or break? A tie? Yeah, break ties, yeah. Okay, so you are not voting. You're the one not voting. I'm the one not voting. Okay. Yeah. I saw that hand up. That's a legitimate question, though. In years past, we have had very different counts from the number of members sitting at the table on occasion. If, if so. we come up with, like, 12-3, <laughs> then I would start to ask questions. Okay. Thank you. Kindly. It's been minuted, even. Okay. Uh, on to Memorial Day. Uh, page 71 titled Patriotic Purposes. Yeah, I would move the Memorial Day budget in the amount of $600. Second. Second. Uh, okay, so uh, the motion by Andy Robertson, seconded by Zach Langlois. This is an expenditure for flags for the, sep uh, for the cemeteries for Memorial Day and any other minor costs incurred with so if this actual was in June, why Memorial Day uh, was just not expensed um, in, in the month? I think there may be a budgetary... Uh, from, from year to year, sometimes the flags are donated um, from different organizations. Okay. Sometimes we pay for them. Okay. This may have been, I'd have to check with the bookkeeper, sure. one of those years where we budgeted, but they were donated. Okay. I just want to make sure we have flags more than filling in the lines. Yes, there are flags. <laughs> right. Mr. Robertson. Yeah, uh, as far as that as of June notation, 
uh, at the top of the expenditure oh, line on every page? It, yes. Uh, as I was wondering what you were referring to. Now, it, the, well, it was pointed the, out to me earlier, too. So that That is just part of this form. The date in the upper left-hand corner is when it was run, actually. Is when it was run. And depending on whether or not we've gone through a certain process to update the expenditures, it'll pull it from our accounting budget and put it in this in this thing. Uh, my my thought is that it hasn't been charged this year for the flags. So so this the June and sorry to kind of go back, but the the June thing was pointed out earlier when the cemeteries commission was up in terms of five thousand dollars versus the twenty thousand dollars. And it was, I, my understanding was the reason that was five thousand dollars was there was because it was June, and so it's half the year. And the the actual year to date expenditure for the cemetery at this time is fifteen thousand nine hundred ninety. Okay. Again, when this was printed, it was not updated with our accounting, so okay. it, it depends on when we run that process. Okay, so it's been billed within the last three right. years. If you want actual stuff. expenditures year to date. It's on the town website. You can look at okay. the expenditure oh, report and get that. accurate budgets as of today. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Von Hassel. I, I just recalled seeing something on the cemetery uh, minutes that they were discouraging the placement of flags. It wasn't, I, Maureen is gone, so I really can't ask. It was by individuals, not by the town. It is an organized effort for. Uh, veterans graves um, there's also there's a ceremony on Memorial Day that visits each um, cemetery uh, there they also stop at the bridge um, uh, I, I'm all for it I just remember reading something in the cemetery committee uh, notes or meeting minutes that they were discouraging the placement of flags which was a little troubling but uh, whatever um, but yeah. Like I said, Marines gone. So, okay. Any more questions, comments? Okay. All those in favor of the patriotic purposes uh, Memorial Day uh, budget line item of six hundred dollars, please raise your hand. Signify by saying aye. 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 Nine to zero. Okay. Uh, and last but not least, advertising regional associations, page twenty-eight. Move that in the amount of forty-three hundred and ninety dollars. Second. Uh, I would note that this is your New Hampshire Municipal Association dues. It's based on population um, in your community. Uh, I, I'm not sure what year this is. I believe it's a little low. The 4385. Um, we're actually closer to 5,000 at this point than we are 4385. But where where are we seeing the 4385 number? Sorry. In the backup information. That's what uh, NHMA used to uh, calculate oh. Deerfield's dues. Population 4385. Okay. That comes straight off the. I was actually just on there today, the state website. Which is usually. Projections. I forget how many years that lags, but it, it's not. Well, it's the today. last census was 2010, and so it's yeah. a projection. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's pretty well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, sorry, the motion was. Uh, Mr. Dill, I believe. I made it. Oh, Mr. Dill. Just to mess with you. AD. Okay. Uh, and. I second. Seconded by Mr. Langlands. Okay, uh, so all those in favor of the Advertising Regional Association budget line item of $4,390, please raise your hand. Signify by saying aye. 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 Nine zero. Okay, I think that includes the budget review uh, for everything excluding the zoning board adjustment, uh, which we'll try to reschedule for uh, the remaining two days to dates uh, before we get to the school board. Citizen comments. Seeing none. There's one real quick. I will not be here on the 26th. Okay, which is our next meeting. Correct. Which is next Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. So John Dubianski will not be here. 
mark that down as an excused absence yes, in the future. My, my, my chief is spending Thanksgiving in California, so mm -hmm. I have to run a training. For ho hopefully not for business and more for pleasure. Yes, it's a social. Okay. Um, okay. So motion to adjourn. Second. Second in. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Hasta luego. Never asked if anybody.